earlier this year, we highlighted the safest vehicles for 2025. Now we're flipping the script to expose vehicles with critical safety flaws you'll want to avoid. We'll use three crash tests conducted by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety to make the assessment. The small overlap test challenges vehicles with just 25% of their width, hitting a rigid barrier at 40 miles per hour. The side impact test slams a 4,200 pound barrier into the vehicle's side at 37 miles per hour. The moderate overlap test evaluates second row safety using a rear seat dummy. Any vehicle scoring poor or marginal in these tests lands on our unsafe list and will break down its deficiencies. With a lengthy list to cover, we're splitting this into two parts. Today, we're diving into cars and minivans. First up are the small cars. In the moderate overlap test, the Nissan Sentra's rear restraint system substantially failed in two ways and contributed to the overall marginal rating. First, the rear dummy experienced submarining, where the lap belt shifted from the pelvis to the abdomen. Second, the shoulder belt slipped upward toward the dummy's neck, failing to secure the upper torso. These failures are highly dangerous. Submarining increases the risk of severe abdominal injuries while the mispositioned shoulder belt not only fails to protect the chest, but also poses a direct injury risk to the neck. This reflects a complete breakdown of the rear restraint system's core functions. The Subaru Crosstrek and Impreza also exhibited rear seat submarining in the same moderate overlap assessment. This dangerous phenomenon causes the immense forces of a crash to be concentrated on the vulnerable soft tissues instead of the stronger pelvic bone. In a real-world crash, this can lead to severe injuries to internal organs. The dummy's chest also recorded moderate injury readings. Next up are mid-size cars. The Kia K5 received a poor rating in the moderate overlap test, indicating completely inadequate protection for the rear passenger. Injury measurements on the rear dummy indicated a likely risk of head, neck, and chest injuries. Most alarmingly, the lap belt slid upward from the pelvis to the abdomen during the crash. In the side impact test, the K5 earned a marginal rating due to structural deficiencies and inadequate airbag coverage. The vehicle's structure exhibited excessive intrusion, compromising occupant safety. Additionally, the driver's head protection system failed, as the test dummy's head slipped past the side curtain airbag and struck the windowsill indicating insufficient airbag shape or deployment pressure to cushion the occupant in the deforming cabin. Elevated injury metrics were also recorded for the driver's torso and the rear passenger's pelvis. The Nissan Altima received a marginal rating in the moderate overlap assessment due to multiple safety failures for the rear passenger dummy. During the crash, the shoulder belt slipped off the shoulder and shifted toward the dummy's neck, reducing its effectiveness. Concurrently, the lap belt moved from the pelvis to the abdomen, significantly increasing the risk of internal injuries. In the side impact test, the Altima's performance was concerning, earning a poor overall rating. The vehicle exhibited severe structural failure, with significant intrusion into the occupant compartment, triggering a cascade of safety issues for the driver. Injury metrics indicated a high risk of torso, pelvis, head, and neck injuries. Most critically, the driver dummy's head bypassed the side curtain airbag and struck the windowsill, highlighting inadequate head protection. The Subaru Legacy and Outback both earned a marginal rating in the moderate overlap evaluation due to rear restraint system failures. In both vehicles, the rear dummy submarined under the lap belt, allowing it to shift from the pelvis to the abdomen. In the Legacy, the shoulder belt also slipped upward toward the dummy's neck. The Outback exhibited an additional unusual hazard. During the crash's rebound phase, the rear dummy's head moved beyond the side curtain airbag's protection and struck the window trim. These issues indicate a critical failure of the restraint system to secure occupants effectively. Despite their higher price tag, there are three underperforming luxury sedans. In the moderate overlap test, the Genesis G80's dummy in the rear seat registered a moderate risk of head and neck injuries. However, 
the primary failure was in the restraint system's kinematics. During the impact, the rear dummy's shoulder belt slid upwards toward the neck, compromising its ability to effectively restrain the occupant. Additionally, the dummy's head moved toward the front seat back, heightening the risk of head injuries in a real-world collision. The Lexus ES received a marginal rating in the moderate overlap assessment. Readings from the rear dummy's chest indicated a moderate potential for injury. Additionally, the dummy also dangerously submarined under the lap belt, allowing it to slide from the pelvis to the abdomen. The redesigned Mercedes-Benz E-Class earned a marginal rating in the moderate overlap evaluation, with the score being pulled down by poor performance of the rear seat restraint system. During the crash, the rear passenger dummy's shoulder belt shifted excessively upward toward the neck, reducing its effectiveness and increasing injury risk. More critically, this dummy submarined under the lap belt. The unsafe minivan list is especially concerning, as these vehicles are primarily used to transport families. The Chrysler Pacifica received a marginal rating in the moderate overlap test, with it demonstrating moderate chest, head, and neck injury risks in the rear seat. The Pacifica was further marred by the failure of the side curtain airbag to deploy, a significant lapse in the safety system's performance that puts the head at risk of striking hard surfaces in real-world collisions. The Kia Carnival was also rated marginal in the moderate overlap evaluation, with the rear seat dummy showing elevated chest, head, and neck injury risks. This dummy made hard contact with the head restraint during the rebound phase of the crash, indicating poor control of occupant motion after the initial impact. In the moderate overlap test, the Honda Odyssey received a poor rating, the lowest among minivans, due to its failure to manage crash forces on the rear occupant. The restraint system transmitted dangerously high forces to the dummy, resulting in a moderate risk of chest injury and a high risk of head and neck injuries. This dummy recorded a very high shoulder belt tension of 8,100 newtons. The Toyota Sienna's marginal rating in this test is due to a different kind of failure, poor control of the rear dummy's movement. While injury risk measurements were significantly lower than the Odyssey's, the restraint system failed to maintain proper dummy positioning. The lap belt slipped from the pelvis onto the abdomen, risking internal organ damage, and the shoulder belt shifted toward the neck. These issues highlight deficiencies in the system's geometry and its ability to secure the occupant effectively throughout the crash. These models raise serious safety concerns that every car buyer should weigh carefully. If you found this video helpful, you'll love this next one, where we look at large SUVs with surprisingly weak protection. Thanks for watching.